Caesar, the crowd pleaser. If you need to pick me up, ladies, we gon' change your demeanor. Caesar, the crowd pleaser. We gon' do a little dance, we gon' make the naysayers believe us. Hey girl, had a long day, you tired from work. Throw me some dollars and I remove my shirt. You can touch me too, these are the perks. Free yourself, lose your mind and go berserk. Uh huh, and go berserk. Uh huh, and go berserk. Uh huh, and go berserk. Make way for the bad guy. What is up, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Crowd Pleaser, the podcast that brings you the inside scoop on what it takes to be a male entertainer in today's age. I'm your host, Caesar the Crowd Pleaser. And this is going to be episode 43 of the podcast. And I have a special event for you all. This is going to be entitled Operation Valentine's Day. Uh, First things, I want to go ahead and bring on my special guest. He's been on the show a couple of times. He's a good friend of mine, and I'm pretty sure he's won your hearts and minds. And welcome back on the show. (laughs) Secret A-list, man. How you doing, brother? (laughs) I'm doing good. Yeah, uh, he laughs. He's super humble, but like I can tell, I constantly every time you're on the show, I get a ton of feedback about you, and people want to meet you, and they think you're absolutely amazing. So uh, yeah, it's it's a real thing. So thanks again. All right. So before I dive into what this is, because this is going to be a doozy of an episode, I want to go ahead and take the time to thank my patrons out there at Patreon.com/crowdpleaser. Just want to say thank you, real brief. It the show is. Continuing its journey down this path because of you, and I really appreciate it. It makes a big difference. The contributions, small or large, they are all greatly appreciated. So thank you for taking the time and effort to do that. Once again, uh, patreon.com slash crowdpleaser. Next, LaBear Dallas. All right, if you are in the Dallas area and are visiting, you can come check us out through five nights a week, Wednesday to Sunday, 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. The party does not stop, ladies and gentlemen. As soon as you walk in the show, make sure you check in to our Thursday night amateur night. If you have a good-looking gentleman that wants to try his luck on our stage, bring him out, have a little bit of fun, and make a good memory. Lastly, our reunion party is going to be happening September 21st. We normally have about 15 entertainers up on that stage all night long. But for this night, and this night only once a year, we bring back all retired, or not all, because that would be a packed house, but guys that came on dance 10 years ago, 20 years ago, two years ago, they all come back and kind of do one last hurrah, party with us, it's a good time, you get to see your old friends, so definitely check it out, it's a good time. All right, so with that out of the way, I'm going to dive right into it. Secret Ace Men, like I said, we're good buddies, you decide to, you have an idea, you wanted to. To pit, you pitched it to me for my assistance. I thought it was a great idea, and we decided to actually record it on the show <laughs> yeah. and uh, show the world what an amazing human being you are uh, through and through. So I will go ahead and pass the torch on to you. Go ahead and break us down what you had in mind. Well, I think my mistake was that I joked about it on the air with you in the last episode that we were together. So it's out there now. <laughs> yeah, true story. And can't take it back. Um, so what... If, if you didn't hear the, the previous episode and this one throwaway joke that was made, um, it's the kind of thing that a guy will do. He'll make a joke that's a half joke and it's not really a joke. He just wants to see how it gets responded to. And depending on that, he can say, no, I was just kidding. Or I don't know, maybe I was serious. It it kind of all depends. But the, the joke was, Caesar said, I, I need to get you up on stage one of these days. Because in, in previous episodes, I have shown a lot of appreciation for what the guys do up there. And so he... He gave me the eyebrow raise. <laughs> and, yeah, throwing ideas my way is a bad thing, bad thing. <laughs> and that was the gauntlet. That was the challenge. Um, but in in thinking about it, I realized it, it, it really did dovetail nicely into something that I had wanted to do for a while. So this, is, this will also be the total honesty episode here. Um, I just a few months ago had my 50th birthday. Oh, wow. And... Although no one ever tells me that I look like it, it is... No, not in the slightest. It, it is true. It is, it is the fact. What, how old would you say I looked if you didn't know what I just said? Honestly, I would put you late 30s. I would put you about my age. All right. So 30... 38? 38. Okay, we'll go with that. So what I wanted to do um, for my wife is give her... Sort of the best of both worlds, the the devoted married man, but what if for one night she could still have the hot stripper dancing just for her? 
Um, my wife is from a Navy family, a Navy upbringing, and the the man in the Navy whites has always been pretty much the pinnacle, her ideal of the handsome man. Like you, you don't get more attractive to her than to be a broad-shouldered, dark-eyed man in navy whites. Okay, all right. So I had already bought a shirt, the the the, the Top Gun dress whites, the dress whites. Um, and I didn't know exactly what I was going to do with it. I just knew that um, her birthday uh, is is very near mine, so she was going to have her fiftieth as well. And I just knew I wanted to make it really special. And that was about as far as my thought went. I, mm-hmm. I have I have the whites. They're in my closet. Um, but the more that I got to become close friends with you, the more I thought, you know, I could just do some loving but lame <laughs> attempt. Yeah. And she would love me for being adorkable. Yeah, hey, the, the, the grand gesture. <laughs> it was the gesture, yeah. right? You know, it was the... Uh, it was the music on the boombox. You know, I love him for trying, kind yeah. of, in the living room. I, I, I will say this. I do have a shirt in my closet that has adorable written across <laughs> it. So you came to the right place, good sir. Yes. So so I had that swirling around, and then you and I just started joking. And you you went and did the thing, which is when one guy gives another guy a sincere compliment, you said, no, you could really be good at this. And damn it, that didn't stick in my... Planted the seed. You planted yeah. it. I was inceptioned. And so then I started to think about it. Like, okay, I know he was kidding. Or, or was this one of those half-kidding guy things? And I don't know, could I be good at it? And so then when we started reviewing the Magic Mike films, I was looking at them also studiously mm-hmm. of... You know, and every now and then it's, yeah, that's not so hard. I, yeah, that, I, that's yeah. doable. I mean, give me a few months of, of preparation. Yeah, sure, why not? I mean, you get down on a knee. I can get down on one knee. <laughs> um, so... It, it grew sort of bit by bit, and um, the courage, of course, has to go with it. It's one thing to have these cerebral thoughts and, and be sort of the, the couch quarterback as you watch Magic Mike and go, mm-hmm. yeah, sure, of course. you know That's yeah. the equivalent of the touchdown pass. Of, sure, I could do this. Um, but then the thought of, yeah, but really, mm-hmm. um, does hit you. I mean, you don't just suit up and go out to the Superdome without... Yeah. Being ready for that, right? So, Realizing that all the eyes are actually on you this time, right? Yeah, um, and and I am a musician, and I'm and I'm used to being on stage, and even when I have everything ready, I still, as any performer does, you get nervous, you get the butterflies in your stomach, oh, yeah. you mm-hmm. you start to question, wait, do I really have the solo down? Because you know, I kind of pushed myself on this one, and yeah. I'm, I'm going, I'm going past my comfort zone, and I could crash and burn. Top Gun reference, so. I, I, I came to sort of a reconciliation point of, yeah, but if if I'm going to go down, I want it to be in just this atomic cloud-sized... Mm, blaze of glory, yeah. Blaze of glory. I mean, if it, blaze of glory. Yeah. So, there's okay. a Freudian slip. Yeah. Um, so I think it was just... Eventually, I just I got to this place in my in my head of just damn the torpedoes. I want to be the guy when he's ninety years old who said, "You want to know what I did one time?" Yeah. And here's how it went: my good or bad or ugly. Yeah. Um, I feel I feel like as you you mature in life, instead of doing more things, you realize how little you've done, and so you start to kind of not backtrack but try to make up for lost time. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? When you're young, it's like you do one or two things and you think you've done everything. And you would think over years and years of doing that, you get older, you're like, oh, man, I've had a great life, but the, which might not still be true. But then you start to think, well, heck, I haven't done this. I haven't done that. I haven't done this. Yeah. And so and then you kind of get into that. What the heck? Like, I've lived this long. Why not? Yeah. And so everything becomes even more possible. You're like, all I have to do is really try to do it. And, and I think also as you have gotten older and you have done more of those things you realize that you know none of them killed you the earth never split in half and everyone got flung out into space because yeah. you tried something um and then I, I look back on my life and i realize that a lot of the things that i've done that have been really great experiences either i didn't fully realize what i was getting myself into and then it was too late mm-hmm. like for example i've thrown out a first pitch on espn on a, at a pretty well televised national baseball game dressed as superman Oh, wow. 
And I threw a strike, by the way. Thank goodness for that. Jeez. But I had no idea that that's what I was asked to do. Yeah. A friend of mine said, hey, would you mind coming out as Superman and throwing out a first pitch at a baseball game? And I swear to you, I thought he meant Little League. Yep. I can understand that. I mean, uh. But by the time, you know, it was like a week before the event and I said, you know, like, which Little League park am I supposed to go to? And he says, no, no, it's at this college. Like, it's their World Series kind of playoff kind of thing. And I'm like, what? So I've had a series of those that normally would have been, okay, flag, stop. I'm out, white flag, Yeah, you know. But in that particular case, I even sent a message to some of my coworkers the day before the ball game, and I said, hey, um, I just realized I have to do this tomorrow. Can someone teach me how to throw a baseball? Because I'm about to do it on national television in a cape. Yep. Um, and I got through that just fine, and for less reason than I have now, which is to do something for the woman I love. So I started to balance those those things in my head, and then I thought, well, you know, I'm kind of – there's not enough time before her birthday now, so there's my out if I want to take it. There's that sliver of window I can crawl through, Winnie the Pooh style. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I thought, no, I don't, I don't want to do that because I already worked myself up to this point. I don't want to bail. Yeah, the what if will be there forever. The what if would be there forever. Um, and then it occurred to me, Valentine's Day. What a great gift this could be for me to give my wife on Valentine's Day. So... Offline, Caesar and I started talking a little bit, and we realized that we he had enough time to work with me between now and then. Like he could he could actually sculpt me into something and and train me into something, and we could we could do all of the the choreography um, that would need to be done within six months. That's a that's a good enough time frame. And then he crossed his arms and he looked at me and he says, "So you're in, right?" And so we're sitting at a Starbucks, and I'm like, okay, this window is really closing now. Like, there's, there's a little bit. I could still, if I, if I flatten like a cat, yeah, just I, I can get me, out. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I just, I just looked back at him, and I just had this moment. I said, yeah, I'm in. I'm in. Let's do this. So um, here I am, nerves and all. Um, never done this before. I'm not exactly in shape, but... I'm in. We're 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 going to do this, and and I want uh, I want you all to join me on this. So here we are. Yeah. So to summarize it, in, over the course of the next six months, I'll be working with Secret Alias Man, training him on all the things we're going to discuss on this show, which is going to be uh, dietary um, supplementation to get his body where he needs to be, workouts, choreography for the routine, and. Then, obviously, the stage presence, which he talked about already. He has a good base of knowledge of. And so we're going to take all that, combine it, improve on it, sculpt this perfect routine. And by perfect, I mean literally for him and his wife that he's going to bring on the stage of La Bear and perform one of our routines to. I'm most likely going to modify it so it fits him personally. But, yeah, and we decided that we wanted to go ahead and publicize this, kind of open it up to everyone so with that uh just to summarize one last we're gonna do this across three episodes so this is gonna be the first episode and this one is actually like i said gonna talk about all the base stuff that he's gonna start to do over the course of the upcoming six months in roughly three months we're gonna bring him back on the show talk about how the workouts are going talk about how the routine is going the diet all that make modifications let you know how he's doing and then finally the third installment Third episode will have the post production after he performed on stage. If he's still able to go the autopsy, on, yeah, <laughs> find out how things went, and hopefully, as of right now, she doesn't know yet. But we should have his wife on the show and let us know her whole experience about it. And you all, as great listeners, get to enjoy that with us. So, uh, who knows, ladies? If you want to share this with your husbands and boyfriends and tell them that's what they need to do. Uh, I would bring them out to amateur night first and make sure that they have the uh, the intestinal fortitude for it before we go jumping through any crazy hoops. But, so that's it. Uh, Secret Ace Man decided to do something amazing for his wife, and he is going to perform a routine just for her. Literally, just for her. No other woman is going to get this routine, and you're along for the journey. So thank you for that. Secret Ace Man, thank you so much for trusting in me, even something that started as simple as a joke, to take down, go down this path. And you have six months <laughs> To question it up until the last moment. No, no more questioning. Okay. Just work. All right. So, diving right into it, we're going to diet. 
they always say the abs are made in the kitchen and sad but true they are diet is really what kind of sculpts your body you will have a workout to generate the muscle mass that you need but the definition and the actual being the aesthetic part comes out of diet so you've already started to watch your diet Mm -hmm. correct um I mean, it's just good for you. Like you said, you're getting up there in age, and so you look phenomenal, as everyone tells you. So, but diet becomes a more important thing. So, well, let, let me let me say too before we like take away all of my progress curve. Um, four, five weeks ago, I weighed 180, and I'm about five ten and a half. So, guys, like put that in in a little bit of perspective. Um, and and that 180 came from a lot of birthday celebrating. Um, so since then I've gotten down to 174, but I, I'm carrying some gut, um, because I didn't say no to a cake or a, a glass of celebration, um, for a good two and a half months. I've got some very good family and friends. Yeah. Um, so I've, I've got definitely some abs work to do. Um, and, and that's mostly where my, it, it, my nerves, I guess you'd say. Of. Yeah, that's that's where it lies is is in the abs. Yeah, and completely understandable. I mean, that happens that one. I'll be honest with you. Periodically, if I feel like I kind of slipped off my diet a little too much, I have to do an ab check and like, mm, is this stage ready? I'm not really sure. So you're not you're not far. Good news is is that most of the time, especially as we mature, for some reason, I feel like our bodies respond more to less, so to speak. So it's you're gonna suffer a little bit. To make change like you just have to you can't get everything you want and see a change but good news is is once you see that change it'll be a lot easier to maintain it Mm -hmm. um your body will adjust to that new zero so to speak and then you won't you can still have your celebrations and even relax some especially if you're not gonna go on stage half naked but still see what your hard work over the course of the last six or the next six months paid you know created so to speak so with that what I'm going to have you do is, first off, tracking everything is huge on diets. It's too easy to have an extra you know, granola bar or a helping of cereal or something like that and just, oh, I just had a snack and then realize that that snack was 400 calories and who knows how much sugar and things like that. So tracking is the very first thing that keeps you, A, aware of what your intake is, but B, holds you accountable to yourself because you're like, man, do I really want to write down that I had two donuts? And honestly, it helps like right. keep you steady. It really does. <laughs> I just see me looking at this donut just with this understanding between the two of us. Like this is off the record, right? Yeah. Like, like yeah. You don't say anything. And I don't say anything. This never <laughs> happened. So I like to use my Fitness Pal, which is an app you can download for smartphones. Uh, the reason why I like it is it has actually a barcode scan, and so you can scan whatever foods you you purchase at the store. And it'll upload right to it. It has a lot of uh, fast food or restaurant menus on there as well. You just go like, you know, the grilled chicken from Chili's. And it'll actually have the nutritional value for it. And it does all the math for you. Um, you mentioned that you have a Fitbit. Mm-hmm. So that also has a program that can keep track, right? Mm-hmm. So you can go ahead and do that. You really have to be, this is level one of discipline. Like, sounds, it's an easy task to do, i.e. jotting down everything you eat. But it's because it's so easy, it's also the first, the easiest thing to mess up or not track. And so that slips your discipline. And it sounds so minute, but it's one of those things that it's the cornerstone for everything else afterwards. Okay. Um, so you really, once you start, you want to stay on it as vigilant as you can. Sometimes I understand, like maybe you had something on the go, you're like, okay, I'll write it down later, but you need to really stay on top of it. A lot of times, make it the biggest priority, like almost writing down what you're eating before you eat it makes a big difference. Um, And that will help us later on down the line, adjust your diet. The reason why I say that is because I've, unless you're doing a show, i.e. like Mr. Olympia or something like that, where you're walking across a stage where people are 100% judging you strictly on your physique, you don't need to have a completely miserable and super strict diet. The reason why I say this is one of my biggest proponents when I've helped people through life coaching, my own training and things like that, is regardless of how good a diet is, the best diet for you is the one you can actually maintain and stick to. Mm -hmm. If I could give you a diet that will help get you ready in six months to walk across, you know, Mr. uh, The Europa stage. But if you don't stick to it, it does nothing for you. Now, if I give you a diet that's a little more flexy, a little more 
suitable for your eating habits right now and we slowly adjust that, you can stick to it and you will see change. Um, so that's really important. I'm not a big fan of changing diets overnight. I like I've been eating whatever I want for the last, you know, whatever, let's say 10 years. And tomorrow I'm going to eat completely different because your body's going to go into shock. You're going to be miserable. And it's going to be way more difficult to maintain. So we, we want to sort of get me to a new normal. Yes, correct. And that's what we're going to be doing. So uh, I, I won't go into too many specifics on the show, but what we're going to start doing is one, I want you to start tracking everything you're eating so I can adjust off of that. But what we're going to do is I'm going to start supplementing some of your meals. So two ways that I like to do things is you can either stay strict for X amount of days and then you have a cheat day where I'll let, you know you can eat whatever you want, but then go back to that strict diet or we slowly start modifying your diet over the course of like, let's say you have three meals a day. I might try to dial in two of your meals and let you continue eating the way you're eating for one meal. Um, so... Which one do you think you might be better suitable or might better, you might be better suited to uh, maintain as far as mental and emotional stability? I mean, I mean, honestly, I think I'm more the eat this, lift that kind of guy. So the more you tell me to do, the yeah. more I'll just follow the instructions. Okay. All right. Perfect. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, once again, I won't get too in depth on the air, but... The diet I'm going to give you is going to probably consist of some type of carb loading in the morning. Uh, what time do you normally get up? Eight. Eight. And you go to work? Yes. Or, okay. I walk the dogs. Yeah. And go to work. Okay. All right. Well, starting off with some kind of cardio is perfect. So actually, we'll, uh, how long do you walk the dogs for? Um, give or take? Until they're done. So uh, by the time I do all three dogs, it's about half an hour. Half an hour? Okay, that's actually perfect. We'll count that as a, a low-intensity fasted cardio. So what we're going to do is, um, I don't know if you normally eat or not. If you don't, that's even better. We're going to wait for you to have breakfast until after you're done walking the dogs. That's what I usually do. Oh, perfect. All right, so you're already on it. Mm -hmm. um, that gets your heart rate going. It gets your metabolism kicking up. And with nothing freshly digested, it's going to eat on uh, the fat stores, ah, which okay. you had over, you know, stored over um, as your... Body processes food while you're sleeping. So eat the empty. Yes. Got it. All right. So that's going to happen. We're going to do something a little light. Probably do you eat cereal or are you more like an eggs, steak and eggs kind of guy? Like what do you normally have for breakfast? I Give normally have coffee and a breakfast bar. Okay. Uh, cereal bar or like protein bar? Like a protein bar. Protein bar? Okay. We might modify that a little bit. As in slap it out of my hands and say no? Uh, sort of. We'll change the bar into a cereal form. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we'll, we'll look at some cereals that you might work and stuff like that. That's a little more balanced because sometimes those bars tend to be a little bit heavier on the sugar side. The protein bars are a little less, but it's also processed and we're going to try to get you on more whole foods, um, just because it's easier for your body to process and it actually get, lets you sneak in extra calories. Okay. You can have the same two exact meals, but if one's, let's say at a restaurant processed and held and transported and all that stuff and you have one that you cook the exact same meal yourself, you might actually get 200 calories, let's say, so to speak, back from the meal you cooked just because less preservatives, it's not processed, et cetera, et cetera. And so that will help you diet because now you're maximizing your volume. Now you can eat literally more to still get in your 2,000, 2,500 calories a day versus if you were eating out. And obviously that's obviously with junk food, like I always go to my Oreos. I love Oreos, that's my cheat meal type thing. But it only takes two Oreos to be 180 calories. Death Oreos. Yeah. So like literally that's, a, you know, three quarters of a meal right. in two cookies. Um, so that's the extreme of it. Obviously, you're not going to be eating junk food, but we'll go off of that. All right. Then we might have you have a minor snack at work. That might be something on natural fats like nuts or something like that. Almonds are my thing for a snack. Oh, perfect. You're already on it. Shoot. So we're actually, diet might not end up being that more, that difficult of a thing. It might be just a matter of uh, watching where your calorie counts are and adjusting off of that. Maybe. My, my new favorite nighttime snack are the snap peas with okay. ranch dressing. Okay. Uh, I'll have to look at the nutritional value of those and check that out and see where you're at. Um, another one that we'll have to look at is alcohol. That might be a thing where you add that to your either we can modify your diet to accommodate depending on how often you drink mm -hmm. and what you drink mm -hmm. as well as or just make it make it like if you always go out and drink on saturday night then we'll just make saturday your cheat day 
Got it. Uh, and we'll just fill those calories off of that. Um, especially if it's honestly just around the beer gut. That's that's a major part of it. They call it a beer gut for a reason. Sadly, that's where men store their fat first and one of the last places for it to go. So, But we'll work around that. And obviously, like I said, we'll start off a little lax and kind of tighten up as we progress. So you're not seeing a shift overnight. Okay. Uh, how do you feel about chicken and fish? Love them. Awesome. Perfect. That's going to work. You're good on vegetables, I take it? Yes. Sweet. So sounds like most sort of things are going to be pretty good. I think a lot of it is actually just going to be portion control now, seeing how much you actually intake and adjusting those numbers. Okay. You know, if let's say you're having four, eight ounces of chicken every meal. If that's something that's gaining weight, then we might have to adjust that to like six ounces or four ounces per meal and stuff like that. Or maybe if you're cooking them all in oil, we might want to switch some of them to being maybe grilled and stuff like that. Okay. Um, so we'll cross that uh, when we get there. Like I said, the biggest thing is just start annotating everything, especially since it seems like you're pretty much on it. Um, it, it might just be an actual serving size type issue. Well, I mean, yes and no. I mean, I, I, I still want to be real with where I am, where um, I, I am a wine drinker, so I do need to cut back on that if I'm going to hit this, mm -hmm. this goal here. The other thing that happens is that because of my job, um, I do a lot of business lunches. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I can. And those sometimes are like, oh, look, here's another plate of sushi. Here's another one. Here's another one. Oh, look, here's an even bigger steak. You know, yeah. those, those kind of things just kind of get rolling. Um, you know, sure, we'll have another glass. Um, so the, the upside there is that I'm moving into a new job which I will be working from home as opposed to be working out of an office. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, I'm actually very excited about yeah, that. Yeah, that's stupendous. Yeah. Um, Super jealous. <laughs> Just have a rotating door and like a stripper pole in one of my rooms, it works out. I can right. work from home that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll say, well, let me ask my boss. Oh, he says it's fine. It's me. Yeah. So, um, but the upside there is that I won't then have those those business lunches that get a little bit past my control. And, yeah. and I really can, you know do the lunch that I'm supposed to have because I'm making it myself at home. So we've got that to work with too. Excellent. Yeah. The deck so far, the deck is stacked in your favor, which is fantastic. Um, that's awesome. Another thing is if you do, I understand I do a lot of social lunches myself. Sometimes you just have to kind of bite the bullet and let them know like, Hey, I'm prepping for X, mm -hmm. Y, Z. This is something I have to do. And you can kind of accommodate. Some people really get not necessarily offended, but it makes them uncomfortable. Like, mm -hmm. well, I'm eating whatever I want. I feel bad that you're uncomfortable, you know, right. when you're really not. Um, a funny story. I was actually, when I did Europa, uh, about a month away from the show, which is crunch time for any like, physique competitor. You just can't slip at that point. I mean, it's one of those things where, like, I'm just smelling food and be like, okay, I'm good. <laughs> and... Uh, my brother graduated from flight attendant school at here at the American Airlines uh, training camp. And so him and his boyfriend's family came in. And we decided to go out to a really nice steak restaurant. Everything was great. I brought food. Like, I had a strict diet, right. so I brought it. And it made the other side of the family so uncomfortable. Like, they even made the waiter, like, bring me a plate and, like, put the food on the plate because they didn't want me to eat out of my container and stuff like that. <laughs> and I was just like, oh. And they were like, are you sure you don't want something? I'm like, these are, they're like, here, these are veggies. I'm like, yeah, but they were also sauteed in, like, oil and butter. No, I, I, I can't. Right. And uh, so it's one of those things that you, you just, you know. Like I got saying, here, here's an apple. Yeah. You can just see the poison dripping down yeah, it, in you your know, mind. It, it was one of those things where I was like, you know what? Yeah, sure. Give me the mashed potatoes. I just left it on the plate, just right. wiggled it around a little bit, kind of flattened it so it looked like I ate it, you know? So we got through it. So that is the thing. Uh, same thing with wine. But sometimes if you, you express to people what you're doing, especially with such a great, inspiring story that you do or you have, it would, I'm sure that people will be accommodating. But sometimes you do, and that's fine. We'll adjust on the back end. Maybe you'll do more cardio that week or something like that. You know, it's, it's interesting that you say that because the, there are times where I have done that. I've refused something or other, um, and they'll say, why? And I'll say, well, this is something else that I do with my life. And I said, the, the super suit is very unforgiving. And immediately everyone goes, oh, that's really cool. Okay, no problem. So it's a great answer to... Yeah, true story. That is awesome. Yeah. Uh, it, it, I, I tell people I work naked. You know, whenever, <laughs> someone's giving, whenever someone gives me stuff about anything, like why do you work out so much or why are you worried about your mm -hmm. diet? I'm like, look, if I didn't work naked, I wouldn't. But I work naked. So it's a thing. And yeah. they're like, oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, that's super suit. That's, yeah. Hey, I'm Superman. I got to look the part. Oh, well, I mean, shoot. All right. Because at some point in their lives, they probably saw a Superman that was under par. 
and probably gave them crap for it. So they're like, well, all right, I can't perpetuate the cycle. I understand. Yeah, and, and half the time the answer is, dude, props to you. I'd never be able to wear that at all. So there's there's usually a lot of respect and understanding, yep. and I almost never have a problem. Sweet. Excellent. That's even better. I can imagine, like, why are you dieting? I'm Superman. Oh, well, I have no retort for that. Okay, <laughs> moving right along. Uh, next. Awesome. So that is step one. Step two, workouts. So right now, what would you say your fitness schedule is like? Um... So next to nothing, because like I said, I, I was working out before my birthday hit in April. Um, it's now the end of August, and I haven't really gotten back to it. Um, I have a fully loaded gym bag in the trunk of my car, and I've been driving around with it for three weeks. So, I mean, you'd think I'd see more results. Yeah, yeah. Um, <sighs> Sometimes you got to get them out. Of, every once in a while, you got to get them out of the trunk. I, I mean, that's dedication. It has, been, it has been within four feet of me for quite some time. Um I have a membership at a gym um, that was not too far from my office, so I really could have gone any time after work. I just mm. hadn't. Um, and I have an elliptical in my house. I have some free weights that are adjustable, so they can go anywhere from super easy to really, really heavy. Um, and then I have a couple of 10-pounders that I do sometimes, mostly just to stretch my shoulders to get the tension out at the end of the day. So I'll okay. do some bicep curls. Um, with what I think is good form, but I'm not sure that I've ever been trained in form. But I try to do it slowly and yeah. and symmetrically and all the things that seem to be good ideas. Okay. Um, I'll do push-ups um, on my own. I got to the to the point where I could do just about 50 if I wanted to, straight through. Um, Excellent. Huffing the last seven or eight, but I could still do them. That's how you add. That's how you get, I mean... If you're not struggling at the end of a workout, at some point, you're, you're not pushing hard enough. Right, yeah. I could probably drop and give you about 26 right now, but nowhere near where I was yeah. before my birthday. Um, and well, at least you know exactly where you're at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I may have done that this morning just to, just just to, to check. Just to gauge. Well, I mean, there are a lot of things I wanted to gauge before I talked to you about. Understandable. About yeah. Um, other, th- other than that, I, I like running. I just haven't. Um, Mostly because this is Texas, and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. running happens outside, and this is Texas. Um, I also have discovered that I really enjoy swimming, and I really enjoy jump rope. There's just not a place in my house that I have enough ceiling height to do jumping indoors. Um, if there were, I would do it all the time. Mm-hmm. I would just put the Punisher on Netflix, and I would just jump yeah. rope. You know, figuring like, yep. hey, Frank's going through more than I am. I can keep, you know, I can yeah, keep exactly. up five more minutes. Oh, he just <laughs> got shot six times. I can go five more minutes. Um, so I would do those things. Um, uh, I, also, with the elliptical, sometimes I'll put on um, an episode of Smallville and I'll just, same kind of thing. Zone out, yeah. Zone out and just go on the elliptical and go, go, go. And eventually, Clark Kent will be doing something really intense and I'll have that same thought. Like, well, he's doing more than I am. I can keep going. So it is sort of, sort of a motivating yeah. Thing to have these visuals. Um, I used to have the movie Three Hundred on my iPhone, Ooh, and I would, all right, yeah. <laughs> I would take that to the gym. <laughs> Jeez, all right, yeah. <laughs> and just you know, just shame myself. Yeah, into can't not- be that bad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well played. Oh man, I, I might have to start doing that. I have. I actually have. A, I always call it Viking music, but the very strong orchestra, mm-hmm. like powerful symphony type stuff. Uh, I normally have in my workout list. And uh, whenever I play it for other people, it always throws them off because there'll be rock, there'll be a little bit of like right. upbeat stuff, and then something like that will come on, and they're just like, "Where'd that come from?" I'm like, "Dude, you don't want to go like conquer a country right now? Like, come on, you can throw some weights around." And uh, I also, it's not lost on me on the fact that you mentioned superheroes are your motivation. So I definitely, uh, I could see that where, like you said, like, man, I'm starting to get a little short winded on this but uh he got shot six times and he's right. still kind of fighting so i guess i can keep going on my elliptical in my air-conditioned house with my water next to me there's like an, there's an yeah, effect there's yeah, a competitive yeah. a competitive nature i think to it that that happens um and i was going to ask you a question too because i found that like for example when i first went to the gym and i signed up for my membership and they they sort of ran me through okay you're gonna do 10 reps of this or one rep of 20 of those, and I just, all the numbers started running together. It's like, mm-hmm. was it one rep of 20 or 10 mm-hmm. reps of 10 or, you know? And I realized that what, at least to me, demotivates me is math, is yep. workout math. I'm not motivated by counting or 
or keeping track of numbers of where I am and things. I'm much more motivated by watching a guy battle six other guys one on six. Yep. Um, but I know that in order for me to do this, I'm going to have to at some point start keeping track of of my weights and my reps. So does that happen to anyone else? And how do you sort of just accept that that's what it is and embrace it? Is the math of working it's, out? It's realizing that it's a tool to reach another goal. Um, it's one of those things like, okay, let's say, for example, you wanted to see the top of a mountain, right? But you hate walking, you hate climbing. Well, that's the only way you're going to see that top of the mountain. So you deal with the, the hiking and the walking and miserable to get to the top and experience that that you want to. Uh, for a lot of people, the gym is a release. The workout's kind of that mental health. But yeah, not no one likes doing that. Most bodybuilders will tell you, like, it's work. You go to the gym, you work because exactly what you said. Like, okay, this is how much weight I did last week for this many reps. So with the formula, I should be doing this much this week. And it does. It gets meticulous. It gets kind of boring and stuff like that. The one option you have is that you can create more dynamic workouts, more functional workouts. The problem with that is, is that I wouldn't want you to do those on your own because they're, because they're dynamic. The chance to A, either hurt yourself or B, essentially train incorrectly or improper is higher. So it's one of those things where I would want someone working out with you at least for extended period of time consistently till you start to get all the movement yourself. Mm -hmm. And those are great because those you kind of just train to failure. You're like, okay, this workout's going to be, you know, 30 burpees and then 15 cleans and I'm going to throw the sledgehammer or I'm going to flip this tire X amount of times. It's all till you get kind of exhausted and you're on a timer and you want to tire yourself. You're like, okay, I did... It, it, like for example you're like okay flip the tire for a minute let's say you flip the tire 30 times well you want to get to the point where you're like exhausted so the next time that minute comes up you might only do it 20 and then 15 but once again it kind of gets rid of that number thing like mm-hmm. it doesn't matter you just know when for one minute i'm gonna be flipping this tire and mm-hmm. you just sit there and flip it and and it's cool when you do stuff like that because you start to kind of tap into that a little more like an obstacle or a challenge versus a straight workout. You know what I mean? There I, you go. I it, think that's what I'm it, saying. It's easier. Like for me, when I did it, stuff like that, I always tried to find that. I, was, I always wanted to see what was the heaviest tire I could flip. Because a lot of these places, sometimes they only have one, but several places that take this like CrossFit type workouts more serious, they have a various tires, various hammers, various metal objects you can mess around with, all kinds of ropes and things like that just to kind of get creative. And so it was one of those things like, okay, what is the biggest tire I can actually flip? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, when I found one I thought might have been too much, I'm like, okay, is it too much or can I flip it with some technique and work? And mm-hmm. so you get those little mini games in between your workouts, which can be incorporated. And I'll talk to you about those offline to make sure you're getting the correct form and we'll supplement your workouts with that. But at the end of the day, there is a point where you do have to just kind of suck it up and realize that there are going to be numbers. That being said, though, you can simplify those numbers because I'm like that. To avoid, I've never been one of those guys in the gym with a notebook writing down every weight and every rep for every set. I thought about it because those that science does generate results. It will. I'll be the first one to tell you the people that I've talked to that are that meticulous do see results. And much like your diet, it lets you adjust to what's working and what isn't. But I just, I just, it's, it's boring. Yeah, it really is. Straight up. It's like so, fourth grade. Yeah, I so it's the it's the multiplication tables all over again in my head so what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna give you a basic recipe like a master numbers list i.e you're gonna do four sets of every exercise for 12 reps and that's it and that's and that you're just that's four and twelve four and twelve four and twelve all across the board and then as far as keeping track of your weight i'm just gonna let you go off a feel i.e you want to get like you mentioned about the push-ups you want to struggle somewhere between 8 to 12. If you knock out 12 reps and you're like, that was easy, no sweat, go up and wait. If you get to 6 reps and you're like, oh, I'm tapping out, go down and wait. And we'll just use that as a gauge. Mm-hmm. Um, and that way it kind of flexes a little bit as well with the way you're feeling. If you had an extra rough day at work that day, you know, assuming you're working out after work and you're not feeling it, like you aren't going to be stressed out like, oh my God, why are my numbers lower than last week? You're not worried about that. You're like, hey, I am still pushing. And... Wow, I just mentioned that. Let's go ahead and segue into that. Your body doesn't know numbers. It doesn't. The numbers are something that we made, our brains generated, to help us get the science of it, but your body only knows exertion. So it doesn't matter if you're pushing 100 pounds or 200 pounds. 
if you're struggling, then your body, your muscles are going to register that. Like, Struggle. Yes. So don't get too wrapped up in the numbers, especially for what you're looking at. It's all about exertion. All right. Um, I'll also probably, I have you at a higher set of reps, i.e. 10, 12, because I want your heart rate up. We're going to lower your rest. So you get like double the dose of cardio. You get your cardio in the morning. We might supplement some time on the elliptical to accommodate for your drinking and stuff like that. And then you're gonna be at a high rate, low rest during your workouts. Um, since you have stuff at home, I will adjust your workout so you do some days in the gym and some days at home. Okay. That way, much like your diet, I don't want you to all of a sudden change the, the way your daily routine is and they'll just make it harder to keep. That being said, the first Mm, three weeks is the most critical. I feel like if you do anything for three weeks, it becomes habit and it becomes routine and it's a lot easier after that. But those first two weeks is when your body's like, eh, I don't need to go, eh, I'm a little tired, like, ah, I'm hurt. Right. You Once you push back past those three weeks, generally for me and what I've experienced with other people, that's when the routine becomes more natural and it's now it's the opposite. Then if you skip a workout, your body's gonna be like, man, why do I feel so sluggish today? So that's what we're gonna work on. Uh, and that's the biggest thing you need to tell yourself is like, look, I know I don't wanna do it, but I want to. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's kind of one of those things where one state of consciousness is like, ah, you'll need to do it, you don't want to, you're tired, this and that. But the other one is like, wait, the results are gonna be a lot more, a lot longer lasting. Right. So we'll push through that. We're gonna break you off or break you into a three in one right now. So I'm gonna have you working out three days a week, taking one day off. Three days a week, one day off. Um, or not a week, but work three days. Three days straight. Yeah, yeah exactly. One day off. Uh, yeah, so it's going to kind of change up the days that you have off during each week. Sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it's a bad thing. You'll have to figure out if that fits your routine. Some people like knowing, okay, Friday is the day I don't work out every week. and the, Or some people prefer that, hey, I get this Tuesday off. Sweet. I didn't realize that. So we'll go off of that. We're going to break up your workouts. Um if you're going to go to the gym, I'm going to break them up into three day sets. It's going to be chest and triceps and abs. So you're going to be doing your push muscles, I, I triceps, extensions, things like that. Chest, you're already doing your push ups. We're going to incorporate some bench, some dumbbells and stuff like that. And then abs because they're abs, both weighted and body weight. Mm -hmm. uh, at the gym, we'll probably incorporate obviously weights, but also some hanging stuff to really engage your lower abs as well and obliques. All right. Okay. Oh, I should mention I have a pull-up bar at home, too. Oh, perfect. That's going to work out really well, too. We might actually supplement your push-up routine with uh, some leg raises for abs as well as pull-ups because yeah. it's just a great natural workout. Um, and guys, just know that what I mean by that is um, I bought the one that, that goes in the door frame. Um, so you drill. So it's in there pretty good into the wood and it can yeah. hold your weight. But that's what I've got is a door frame pull-up bar. Yeah, it's the, actually the exact same thing I have in my room. Uh, I do it every morning before I go into my closet. I do my abs and do my pull-ups. Uh, then we're going to do shoulders and legs. Reason being is legs is a butt kicker. You hear it all the time. You see all the memes about leg days and people crawling right. out of the gym and stuff like that. We'll try to modify for the days that you, uh, if you happen to have a day where you're going to be on your feet a lot, we might try to make it that your leg day or maybe the day um, after because I don't want you sore that day because it's just going to make life miserable. Uh, there are occasionally times where I've just wrecked myself on the leg day where even going to the bathroom is a mission where I'm kind of, I hit that <laughs> one point where I'm like, all right, this is as low as I'm going to get on my own power. I'm just going to have to flop down uh, and getting up is, <laughs> is no easy feat. I also have a manual driving uh, stick on leg day is, mm -hmm. is not, I've sat in the parking lot sometimes, not even gonna lie. Like I, my legs are not in the condition <laughs> to drive right now. I'm just going to sit here and listen to the radio or a podcast for about 15, 20 minutes. And hopefully I can right. drive after that. You just wheel yourself in like yeah. Professor Xavier. You know. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. And then we, and then shoulders because it's kind of neutral and will rest your arms a little bit. Um, shoulders actually are really aesthetically pleasing. The wider your shoulders are, it kind of broadens out your back and stuff like that. It looks really good on stage, which is going to help you. And when you're wearing clothes, because obviously one of the things you see on guys with suits and things like that, their shoulders really bring it out. So it's good. We're going to work those individually as well. All right. Uh, separate because lower body and then hit legs or uh, shoulders. And lastly, we'll do your pull muscles, which are going to be your back, your biceps, and then once again, your abs. Um, and we'll modify that, like I said, periodically. Knowing what you just said as far as being bored and stuff and trying to fight that, most likely I'll modify your workouts where maybe you'll go to the gym two days and then have a home day or a little more functional training and things like that. Um, and we can get really creative. Like I'm like, when I was in the military, we used to 
stra- uh, we used to push armored Humvees around mm-hmm. for legs. Like just sit there and it sounds really easy, but we were trying to push around a 6,000 pound vehicle in the desert with all your battle armor on. Like it starts to be a workout really easily. Um, so we can get creative like that and whatnot. And that's how we're going to break it down. Uh, once again, I'm, I'll am i give you something a little more specific off the air, but that's typically what we're going to stick to. And like I said, I'm going to have you doing four sets of 12, roughly. And that way you just remember those two numbers. Right. Uh, and we'll figure out the, the number of exercises, probably about five, just to keep it, once again, nice and rounded. Gets you in the gym roughly about an hour, sometimes 45 minutes, sometimes uh, an hour and 10 based on your rest time and what you know abs and whatnot we have you doing on and machines of course depending on when you go sometimes you have to modify your workout because the gym's crowded right uh at home it shouldn't be probably it'd be a little more calisthenic based but you'll exhaust yourself so high intensity low rate of rest but less weight okay and those would be more endurance uh just triggering different muscle groups and stuff like that and a different also engaging your cardiovascular system okay so, uh, and those will probably be about 30 to 40 minute workouts, maybe even incorporate a little bit of stretching just to keep you healthy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I learned early about the, the not stretching versus that. Yes. Yeah. Stretching. Yeah. I, uh, I'll tell you what, I, oh, I always knew I wasn't flexible, but be becoming an aerialist this year mm-hmm. has showed me the immense lack of flexibility I have <laughs> like utterly, like I have, I don't even think you could put any kind of stretch or flex ability near my body no, i've seen you you're it, horrible you're yeah, like a 70s mega action figure there yes Your exactly just won't do the yes. thing anything that involves strength i'm all <laughs> over but anything that involves me being bendy or making a straight line is just not happening uh except maybe my back i could probably keep my back straight that's about it so let me ask you questions we talked about diet and working out the the thing that i found whenever i tried to do this uninstructed just mm-hmm. on my own because i read half a men's health article and i thought i've got this i don't need to um is I never, I don't think ever got correct what to eat before a morning workout. Mm-hmm. I always felt nauseous mm-hmm. and I always felt like I either under ate or over ate. Yeah. So I know you're going to, to give me, you know, offline yes. the whole routine, but can you just sort of tell me like, what's the basic guideline for knowing what to yeah. eat in the morning? So if you're going to end up working, um, we'll go off of, you want, you can go ahead and carb load in the morning. Uh, some people, once again, diets vary. Like I do the keto diet myself quite a bit, which is almost no carbs, just straight from veggies and then high fat and high protein. And that works for me. But on a standard diet, you will have your carbs to get your energy because that's what you used to burn. If you're going to do it before a workout, the trick is once again, portion. Like you mentioned, you eat too much. Now you feel full. It makes you nauseous and stuff like that, especially when you're doing legs because it just gets the, so much blood flow going. People are miserable. But you have the uh, opposite side of that where if you don't eat anything at all, then once again, low blood sugar, you get you feel weak, etc. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's hard to give you a specific num- like magic number because everybody's different. I, for example, I'm not sure if I've always been this way or it's just the way I've pushed my body in the military and being a bodyguard, but I actually can go on either side of that and for the most part be okay just because I've pushed through so many things. Mm-hmm. I could definitely work out without on an empty stomach. I can. Having a full stomach sometimes can kind of mess with me a little bit based on what exercises I'm doing. So honestly, it's a little trial and error, but you want to have some type of fast burning carb, like a white rice or maybe some, not necessarily sugar. Granola is pretty good as well. And you have a portion where like you almost don't feel like you ate something. Reason being is your body, your stomach's going to process it very quickly and shoot it out to your body. Versus the bigger the meal, like when you have red meat and stuff like that, it sits there for such a long time that it's not going to hit your body in time for their workout. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to try to work out in the morning, I would probably, something along the lines of maybe like a bowl of cereal, light on the milk, or um, we could do something starchy, something like a bagel maybe, but it's typically a snack is what you're looking at. So, and I would gauge no later than probably about 20 minutes before your workout, and I would your time frame is probably an hour to 45 minutes just so by the time you start working out it's already getting your muscles and bloodstream so that's what we're gonna shoot for does that answer your question yeah that was clearly that was where i made my mistake because i didn't wait long enough yeah eating and doing the yeah because i mean once again your body needs time to 
process it. It goes to your stomach. It sits there for a while till your stomach goes and breaks it up. Um, a lot of the times you see people talk about they have their protein shakes after workout, but some people even have them during their workout for that same purpose. It's already in liquid form. It's already designed specifically to for your body to process and get it out to your muscles, but people start drinking it sporadically throughout their workout so it's getting processed and by the time they're done with their workout when their muscles are wanting that protein it's hitting them so it's the same thing if you if you have something too close to your workout all you're feeling is that food in your stomach and Mm -hmm. it's not getting out to your body where it needs it does that make sense yeah awesome sweet so that's diet and that's workout next the important part what this whole purpose (laughs) is that was all the behind the scenes now we're going into the routine oh yeah like you mentioned your wife really has a thing for dress white. It was a Navy thing. Big popular movie way back in the day. I, I honestly could say that because it's like I, it was dated, almost dated for me, not really, but now it's for sure dated. Like actually, funny story is now all the stuff that I grew up with is like going on those like social media like, hey, do you remember this? Mm-hmm. And like people are like, what is that? Right. And uh, I actually, I feel, what was it? I can't remember. I saw something or heard something in a song. Oh, that's what it was. Long story short. Let me segue or kind of sidetrack for a second. So I just had my uh, Red Charity event and we did the lip sync battle. Right. I decided to go with Weird Al Yankovic's bat or Fat, yep. which is I the spoof it. off. Yeah, spoof off of um, Bad. Bad. And it was hilarious because in in the song, and mind you, half the people listening is probably don't even know who Weird Al is because I don't think he's done a new song in a long time. But either way. In the song, because I'm memorizing the lyrics for the lip sync battle, he mentions about he doesn't use he doesn't go into phone booths because he's so fat. And I, like, literally, I thought to myself, I'm like, half the people that are gonna listen to this probably have no idea what a phone booth is. Mm-hmm. You know, the, I think the only reason why people might actually still know what phone booths are is because a Superman, <laughs> and b um, the and it's not it's the the British one, but the, Doctor Who. Doctor Who, yes. The, do you know what they're called? I always forget. It's a TARDIS. TARDIS, thank you. Uh, I always forget. I don't know why. But, yeah, it just crossed my mind. I was like, oh, God. Like, that. yeah, okay, so that's a thing. Like, you know, I grew up with phone booths, but, yeah, you don't oh, see I know. them anymore. Believe me, I tried to find one for a photo shoot. Couldn't. Yeah. Couldn't, oh, couldn't yeah, find couldn't one find at all. I wonder if you could get them, like, Craigslist type. You know, like someone that has them in a junkyard or a collector or something like that. It's You might be able to get them pretty cheap, honestly. Um... Honestly, I think it would be uh, cheaper to build one. True. Yeah, fair enough. And yeah, and you could probably make it even lighter. But it would be a great prop for you to do your oh, Superman it'd be, it'd stuff. Oh, it'd be fantastic. As, and we're getting way, way oh, off. God, but yeah. I hope everyone enjoys this. But but my wife, my loving, loving wife, who is, is the reason that I'm doing all of this, one of the reasons that she's so wonderful is we've been talking about getting a new house. Because we currently live in what has always been my bachelor house. And it's small. Mm-hmm. And and we've made the best of it, but we now have three dogs and a cat and, and two lives. Yeah. And, you know, we just need a bigger place. And she told me, she said, you know, you can have, like, your ultimate man cave, complete with whatever secret entrance you want. And after I stopped kissing her, <laughs> we started talking about, like, what would be the ultimate secret mm-hmm. entrance? Because yeah. you could have... You know, the bookcase. Yeah. Or, and, and it, you know, what kind of bookcase do I want the old Adam West Batman bookcase? Oh my God, that's exactly what came into my mind. I'm not even going to lie. I was thinking like drop the skull, hit the button, and the bookcase opens. She's with already the, bought yeah. me the Shakespeare bust that opens yep. and you press the button. And, oh, but then so I thought, good. or do I want the young Frankenstein bookcase? Okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. The put the candle back yeah. bookcase. Um, or, but what I finally Was came that up, the one that spun? Yeah. Yes. That's the one that spun. Yeah. yeah. Um, but what I finally came up with is. To, to play off the Superman phone booth is you could have the front of the and you'd have to you'd have to make it yourself. I'd have yeah. to learn how to weld, but you know, after it's this, doable. I've after done this it. I can do anything. Yeah, I've I'll done learn it. how to weld. I'll be there doing the Channum thing, you know. Yeah. Um, but Channum, Channing Tatum, I combined him. He shipped himself. He's Channum now. Um, but you could make the front frame, and then as you go in, then you just sort of take a sharp right turn that you can't see unless you're actually in it, and that would be the. But it would be like the phone. Oh, entrance. that's fantastic! Yes, that's so good, especially if you have the the opaque right plastic. You know what I mean? So you can't like the person goes in, but you don't see him come out. That right. would be yeah. awesome. Yeah, so you could literally just go in and just yeah. vanish. Oh, that would be so good. Just take a sharp yeah. right immediately, and you're gone. Oh, right. that's so good. See, being an adult is so dangerous because everything's possible. When you're a kid, it's like your parents will be like, "No, that's crazy," or like, "That's fancy." But when you're an adult, you're like, "Wait a minute." 
you, I can actually do this. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not an adult. I'm, an, I'm a child with money and no supervision. Fair enough. I'm, I, I, I'm Tom Hanks yeah. and Big. Yeah, there you go. I, I, won't, I won't lie to you. Uh, when I was contracting, I, I, my, one of my favorite people in the world is, is James Bond. And I found on a, early the, in the internet, I still found a company that actually can make your car into a spy car. Oh, wow. And they have, it's, it's amazing because they totally, they have, I remember I did this over a decade ago. I still remember. They have three packages. They have the aesthetic one where it's just kind of like a couple of, you know, knickknacks and they put to make it look at. Then they have the functioning aesthetics where like there's actual trap doors where machine guns come out from and the license plate drops and things like that. But it's <laughs> all aesthetic. And then for an astronomically significantly more amount or astro- significantly larger amount of money than the other two packages they actually turn it into a straight up spy car with legit machine guns and armor plating and all this stuff. And I was just like, I did not need to see that website <laughs> at all. <laughs> Luckily I've managed to talk myself out of it every time. Right. But, uh, I mean, I can only imagine explaining to the police like, Hey, he cut me off and then he tried to use honk at me aggressively. So I just hit him with the smoke screen. It wasn't my fault. You know, um, you know, if they could just build you like a Mario Kart car, Oh, don't do, you know I'm in the cosplay. That's totally doable as well. Anywho, all right. Anywho, I'm sorry. We sidetracked. Let's go back into this. So, so the dressed whites have always been, you know, the the hubba hubba for for my wife. Mm-hmm. And and I remember when we were talking about it, I said, you know what? I I kind of agree because I remember an old episode of Magnum PI and Tom Selleck mm-hmm, mm-hmm. came out um, yep. at a ceremony. Right. And not only did I think, wow, like that's 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 a look. I mean, that's a good look. And then I remember looking over at my mom, and her jaw was just on the floor yeah. <laughs> watching Tom Selleck come out in his dress whites in the Hawaiian sunset. Yeah. You know, and so that even made an impression on me as this is just about the pinnacle of what you can do for a woman. So I am I am all in on this. Yep. Yeah. It, it's a wow. It's one of the so one of the first routines I had at LaBear was Top Gun. We literally, it's been in the club for a long time, as you can imagine, because I believe Top Gun was eight, early 80s. Mm, yeah, I was in high school. Yeah. It was early 80s. Yeah. So Tom Cruise made it super popular as Maverick, and we took that, and they or they took that at the time and put it on stage. Uh, I inherited it. I cleaned it up. I ended up putting, the way we initially did it was main guy was in the dress whites, and the two backup dancers were in the flight suits. Uh, I... Since then, because of the impact, the wow factor of that uniform, I decided, you know what, if one does it, why not three? So I ended up putting the other two guys in dress whites as well. I just gave them the short sleeve version just to distinguish myself from it. Mm-hmm. And I had the headgear. Um, I also did the correct ranks and stuff, but that's the military coming in. And I cr- cleaned it up, made it a lot more crisp, more military bearing stuff. It's a great act. It's one people over all the time. Uh and so it works out great. Like you and I had a conversation where like we can make this happen. That being said, I wouldn't be opposed to modifying it a little bit for you because you're literally doing it for one person. So I can teach you the main act and even add a little bit or take a little bit away from it because it's honestly quite simple. Like we really kind of just ride the coattails of the movie popularity and the dress whites, the uniform. There isn't anything insane to the choreography and it works. It works. We use stuff from the movie, and it's fantastic. I'm sure she'll love it. And, um, yeah, and like I said, we can even choreograph the parts after it and make the whole routine a part of it um, because that's what I did as well. I had, when I did have to put a bachelorette or a birthday girl on stage and stuff like that, I had, you know, I took the shirt off, had roses fur and stuff like that, and we'll incorporate that into your version as well. Okay. Um, and you can have a lot more fun and just not, you know, I don't know if she's aware what she's getting into or not, but... We'll uh, surprise her left and right when we can. Um, so we're going to do that. We're going to incorporate uh, you have performed before, maybe not dancing, but you have performed, and I believe you have some dancing experience, yes? Um, no. No. Okay. Not a problem. That, no. That's actually good because you have no bad habits for me to break. So we will start from the routine. <laughs> we will get through the routine choreography. Make sure you have that down packed, and then you and I will get a little more personal and start working on what kind of chanting t- or tandem stuff you're going to be doing after the fact for your wife. Okay. And that's where we can really show your personality a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I mean, you kind of tell me what things you think you feel and stuff like that, and I can incorporate it and turn it into a dance move. And, yeah, just have fun with it. Like, 
you can be as machis, you know, radiate as much machismo as you want, or you can be as goofy with it as you want. Whatever makes her happy, we'll make that happen. Um, and the fact that you're smiling right now tells me you already know what you want to do, so that's even better. <laughs> Well, I think I do. We'll talk about it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, what's in your head and what you can actually perform are two entirely different things sometimes, which I've learned the hard way. <laughs> there have been plenty. Of, I always have to remind myself, like, Caesar, you need to record yourself on stage because there's sometimes where I think I just freestyle move and I'm like, oh, yeah, I totally hit that. Right. And no, I didn't. So, you know, I think where, where I have the, the one edge that I do have is how well I know her. Yes. So, I mean, for you, you've either never seen the woman before or even if she's a regular you feel like you have some sort of experience in with history with her mm -hmm. but i truly know mm -hmm. so i've got that Going i think i think we need to try borrow a gopro or another camera and have it positioned somewhere on stage where it's showing her face um obviously i think we should definitely record this mm -hmm. um yeah we can even have a phone and shoot i'll do it i'll just kind of peek out the corner of the backstage and make sure the phone catches her face yeah and uh, i'll go back and edit and make a giant montage for you of like all the things happening simultaneously through like three cameras oh that'd be um, great yeah especially if i can get like a really good emotional look on her or something yeah and probably your look when you first come out on stage like okay this is happening all right mm -hmm. i think it's the backstage look yeah, <laughs> that you really want to get, and then the stage look because they'll be two very different things. I promise. Oh yeah, very much so. I, it happens to me every time I go up on stage, man. Uh, so whatever the look is that you remember the first time when you were paratrooping, mm -hmm. the guy who's never jumped out of a plane before, yeah. you'll see that again. Okay, in all me. right. Luckily, they have us all ducks in a row, so I just saw the back of the helmet of the guy in front of me, and I think they do that on purpose because as soon as you see that helmet get smaller because he's moving away from you, you like you gotta start waddling forward. Uh, but yeah, I, I'll enjoy it for you. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, so we've covered uh, you. All right, so let's talk a little bit real quick about doing it on stage. Right now, that's the plan, but we are going to talk to the owner together mm -hmm. uh, in person to make sure because I feel like he'll have a harder time saying no to both of us. Mm -hmm. And why not? Like, I mean, shoot, we might, we might even kind of snippet a little bit like hey if you come out to the club for Valentine's Day you might get a more personal experience or a surprise or something like that in general but I think it's a great idea both for you for your wife for us for me I'm gonna enjoy it so why not yeah. uh, I actually quick sidetrack actually helped an ex-dancer come back to the club and secretly uh, propose to his girlfriend at the time oh wow uh, he came he reached out to me hey I'd like to make a routine, but I have one modification. I'm like, yeah, sure, man. That's kind of weird, but okay. And he's like, hey, I'm bringing my girlfriend. I want to propose to her. I was like, what? I was super flattered, super honored. So we totally put something together where it was one of those things where they were out just partying at La Bear because people just come out. A lot of ex dancers come back to hang out and kind of see the club. And I just happened to be like, hey, man, one guy's at a stripper gram. Another guy's sick. He's not here. Do you still remember this routine? Oh, the setup. Yeah. And then he was like, man, I don't know. I'm like, bro, please. <laughs> And his girlfriend's like, no, no, go. I'm like, are you sure? Look, I'm really sorry. I'll bring him back in like five minutes. And he's like, oh, all right, fine. Nice. And I'm like, look, I'll tell you what, for being such a great sport, can you come up on stage and we'll just dance? I just need girls. Can you and your friends come up on stage? And she was like, all right, fine. And we started the first minute of the standard routine mm -hmm. and then immediately broke off into an entirely new routine that ended up with him proposing. That is and, awesome. And uh, we actually took the time to, one, to help to ensure in case he got choked up, but two, to make sure it came across correctly, we actually recorded his voice, his proposal ahead of time and added it to the soundtrack. So it went across the entire club. It was absolutely amazing. Like one of the coolest experiences I've ever been a part of. So the fact that I get to do something like that again is just fantastic. That's that's incredible. That's great. Yeah, it was super awesome. Like he posted it on social media and everyone just lost their minds over it. It was awesome. It was great. Uh, it definitely like something to add to my chore uh, choreographer yeah. repertoire now. It's like, yeah, hey, I can even do a, a engagement proposal for you, you know? You know, and I think that's one of the things that I want to give my wife is just like eternal bragging rights forever after this happens yeah oh for if sure she's ever out with her girlfriends and they say you know what's the most romantic thing your husband's ever done for you i just want her to sit and smile and just say nothing and just yeah just have that that glint in her eye of oh it was yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he took me to a strip club <laughs> <laughs> so awesome so are you gonna want to do this alone or are you gonna want backup dancers uh that's a very good question i i don't mind backup dancers mm -hmm. Um, I, I guess that would be reassuring in a way that 
like if I'm with a unit, I'm more likely to do well. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm naively saying that. Um, but then does it become a, a rehearsal time thing of I have to make sure that the two guys are, are willing and able and make the time and all of that. I, I think you've made enough friends at LaBear. Right. And, I mean, we're human beings. Like, I know they do let us out during the day and we do put clothes on. So I feel like if you just swung by next time that you guys were in the club and mm-hmm. figured out, like, you know what? I've talked to ex, you know this dancer enough. I'm going to talk, hey, I want to do something. Are you willing to help me? Or even I can approach them, but I feel like you talking to them would be a little more. Right. Uh, just because you have great charisma and it just kind of like, oh, okay, it's not some random person or someone that I'm talking about. It, this is, you know, Dan- Secret Ace Man himself is talking to me. Um, I don't think it'd be an issue, but plus I, I have no problem training the guys offhand because our schedules are different from yours. And then maybe like the last two weeks we schedule one or two rehearsals to make sure everyone's in sync. Okay. Um, and plus the good thing too is we're all professionals. So it's one of those things that we have no problem vibing off of you. If a certain thing happens, like let's say you happen to like put an extra turn somewhere. Right. We might be a half second behind you, but we'll do the turn with you because okay. you're the lead man and that's the way it goes. See, and I'm used to that playing in bands. Yes, so there you go. Exactly. Um, it will kind of help. Having more people on stage kind of helps the effect. Plus, we can do that the the scene at the bar you know, where he, right. that you lost that loving feeling. So having another guy on stage will help that. Okay. Uh, but once again, they won't say it the whole time. Once the routine, you feel like, hey, I'm good at this point, they'll bounce and you take over on your own. And then it's still just you and her. Uh, it might actually even more so add to the effect because it's kind of one of those things where you're adding a band behind you or doing it on stage on the jumbo. So it's one of those things like you kind of throw more energy into it. Mm-hmm. And then once that energy's up there, the background noise kind of fades and it's just you and her. Like the energy level is still there, but right. it's that tunnel vision. Like first you hit her with everything. It's like, oh my God, I'm on the stage and there's all these people dancing for me and this and that. But, I mean, at the end of the day, let's just be honest. Like, she's going to focus on you, period. And then once everything fades, like, that's all it is. It's fading, but she's still watching you. Um, so I think it'd be a good thing. It just adds to the experience, so why not? You know Sold. I mean? Yeah. Awesome. Sold. Done. Uh, so then the other thing is you'll think about uniforms. Do you, what do you want to have the guys in? Uh, you're more than welcome to use the jumpsuits we have. I got to double check and see because I sold the act about a year ago. So I'm not sure if... Um, they still have the white if you want all guys and if all the guys in dress whites uh the other thing too is we'll coordinate with the gentleman the dancer that already owns mm-hmm. or owns the act now to let him know like hey is it cool if i do your routine on this day which honestly i don't think it'd be an issue uh worst case scenario i'll loan him one of my shows that he knows that he can do for his main stage okay and then that way he's not like well what am i gonna do um so you and i will coordinate that as well okay. it's not a big thing and we can have that one in person as well just Add a little more personal touch. I think they'll be really appreciative of that. I know I would be. And, uh, yeah, we talked about choreography and we're going to do it at LaBear. Sweet. So, yeah, that's uh, everything for the first episode. I hope it was, it was a lot to take in. but uh, And we haven't even started yet. This is uh, step zero. Oh, no, we started. Me, me yeah. putting this out there. We've started. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, I, well, it's recorded. It's not live. So you still have a little bit of a leeway. <laughs> Uh, do you have any questions, any other questions of me? Um, the one question I have is, something I've learned from, from being both a musician and an actor is, it's that that last, I guess, few moments of ending strong and not not wavering. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, the hold, the hold of either the gaze or the position or the, or the whatever. I think that might be the thing that you might... Keep a lookout for on me because I think, knowing me, I might get to the end and just go, "Oh, I did it!" You know, yeah. <laughs> and I and I'm not going to hold it in the way that the memory will stick for yeah. her the way I want it to stick for her. So I think some of those um, entertainer two hundred one mm-hmm. pro tips. Yes. Um, once I get you know past the basics and 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 you feel like I've got. Uh, uh, a base to to add some of those to. I would really appreciate some of those to make it really polished yeah. and and have that memory perfect. Though. So I'm a big proponent of training how you fight, and so I would say or practice how you play would be the more civilian version of it. But 
So what we could do, which I just came off the cuff, is we can actually put a girl on stage with you. Uh, you know, as we get closer, we might start to practice actually at La Bear versus a studio or something like that. And put a random, some, not even someone you know, just put, I'll, I'll invite one of my friends over be like, hey, I need you, I'm testing mm-hmm. out this routine, I need you here, mm-hmm. and see how you, how you can hold her attention. And trial by fire, so to speak. Right. But that being said, Honestly, I don't feel like it's going to be an issue, and I'll tell you why. You two have such chemistry and such dynamic that halfway through the routine, I don't think it's going to be a routine anymore. I don't think it's going to be you performing for your wife anymore. I think it's going to be you two having a moment. So I see more, I see less of a, Whoo, oh God, it's done. Thank goodness. Tap me out, close, you know, turn off the lights, call me off stage, Caden, I'm good, to a everything fades away and you two just embracing each other or having a moment and having it continue on its own to where I might have to be like, hey, it's, uh, <laughs> we got to get the show going. So if you two can kind of like, you know, sweep her off her feet and go somewhere, that would be great. Um, with my luck, you'll probably make the most money that night too. Like I actually tell the DJ, be like, hey man, let them know that they can throw money on the stage. <laughs> I'll have to record that part too. Um, we That could be your drinks for the night or your celebration. Um, but Roses. Yeah. The yeah, I'll, I'll just have someone selling them in the back. But like, if you want roses for the show later, now's the place to get them. But uh, yeah, I, I honestly feel genuinely that would be more that would what would happen than the the ah oh, it's done thing. Especially the kind of energy, like I've seen the energy that rates up radiates off that woman. And yeah, once she gets into the moment, like there's no stopping her. So uh, it might have to be, we might have to actually tie her down to the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Till the routine's done. Be like, look, I know you want to ravish your husband right now, but like, please let him finish the show. He's worked so hard on this. So hard on this right now. Um, so yeah, but we could definitely do some... some, And that's great to put a stranger woman in the chair and be like, all right, work your magic. Let's see what happens. Mm-hmm. Because that's essentially what we do every night. Mm-hmm. Granted, sometimes alcohol helps. Sometimes it doesn't. It happened to me the other night. I had a girl on stage and women absolutely love going up for my shower routine. And to me, I have to remind myself to kind of engage the crowd a little bit because as soon as I step out of the shower, it's all about the woman that's on that stage. Right. I want her to feel like the world is re- revolving around her. Right. And this one, she was more worried about taking good pictures or posing correctly for her friends taking pictures and engaging them than she did me. So it's just one of those things like it's, there's no set formula. You're not always going to strike a home run, you know, and, and, but like I said, it being your wife, I think the deck's stacked in your favor. Like the, just the fact that you're doing this alone will probably win her over. Um, yeah, yeah, you're probably right. I think there'll be some electricity, and then I'll forget that. Yeah, exactly. Is there. Yeah, you might actually completely go off the beaten path too. Like you know what? I know that was the choreography, but this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm gonna do. And the backup dancers will just do a nice little shimmy right <laughs> off stage, and we're good to go. All right. Uh, one important question though: since you're performing on stage. And since you're doing this for her, and in previous podcasts, we have talked about your comfort level in public already. How far are you going to strip for this show? There's no wrong answer. I just need to know. I don't have a a limit in and of myself. Okay. So I think whatever makes the best um, night for her, I'm, I'm willing to do. Off the cuff, I would probably tell you going down to your underwear. Now we can get interesting with the underwear or it could be regular. I mean, shoot, you can even have whitey tidies. I think in my head, in my mind's eye, I'm seeing her clap and chuckle and giggle to herself regardless of what you're wearing. Just the fact that you're ripping your pants off on stage. Mm-hmm. So if you're comfortable with that, I say we do it. I, I'd say we go all awesome, all in with it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it. Uh, he can't chicken out now. Nope. He's definitely going full Monty. So... Check it out if you are in the area. Be out there for Valentine's Day. Don't spoil the surprise. Don't say anything to anyone. Just stay quiet <laughs> until after. Um, sweet. So that is it. Awesome, brother. That is a show. We need to end it with our typical best and worst events of the week. I will start off to give you a little bit of time to kind of... Oh, no. My bad. That's right. You're just going to surprise us. That's right. So my worst event of the week is I recently ordered... I, through a friend of a friend, was referred to a phenomenal entertainer up in New York that creates his own custom uh, showwear. 
So I reached out to him and asked him to make me a set of leggings, heavy duty legging, leggings that I can use for my chains mm -hmm. because I want to incorporate aerial chains into my routine. While I was at it, I was like, you know what? I'm a big, uh, I, I like having my custom underwear. I, I just feel like it adds another signature to myself. And I recently, not recently, about a year ago, lost the seamstress that was making my underwear. So I was like, you know what? Hey, brother, I'll tell you what. Uh, I also, uh, he's a burlesque performer. Okay. So he, he makes underwear for himself and all that stuff as well. So I was like, look, I need underwear for my job. This is going to be a sample pair. I need you to make this, this, and that. Don't get any crazy with it, but this is what I need. Mm -hmm. So he ended up sipping me a pair. And I'll be honest with you, I was a little skeptical about it because he glittered the whole backside. My entire butt is like shark skin glitter. It, it's hard to explain. It's not actual glitter or rhinestones, but it's like some kind of shiny material. Every woman, every woman that's listening to the show right now is screaming at <laughs> at, at the radio what it is. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I don't know. Forgive me. But I was like, you know what? Like, why not? Let's see. It's for the ladies. As long as they like it, I'll wear it. The sides, he ended up going with, and I'm going to butcher this again, but it's like uh, the base layer is a nude, and then he has black stripes going across it, and then uh, kind of like a sheer stocking type material over that. Okay. If, you know, if I explain that correctly. Once again, I'm sure everyone listening is yelling. Like, you know, all, but... Uh, I was like, eh, cool, why not? It's kind of cool, it's snazzy, no one has it at the club, I'll wear it. So I've been wearing it all week, just kind of getting a feel for it, and sure enough, the women are absolutely loving it. So I'll probably have them start making my underwear from now on, make a couple of modifications that obviously there was no way to know because he was just going off of my measurements. But on Saturday, I'm wearing the underwear, People are coming up and tipping me. This one lady comes up to me. She gropes me a little bit. She puts her hands around my butt and then slides them, to, you know, uh, across my hips before tipping me. And I just felt. Oh, no. Yeah. I just <laughs> felt it. And I was like, I'm not going to look. I'm not going to look till later on. So I go to the back. And sure enough, I guess she had a ring or had rhinestones on her nails or something. But some piece of it caught that sheer mesh on the sides. And like a pantyhose rip like it just expanded right and i know it's not a big deal but like i think what really it really isn't now i know it's not a big deal i'm not it's not the end of the world but in my mind i'm like nothing every time i grab that pair of underwear i'm gonna see that giant shred on it and the biggest thing is just the fact that i just got them mm -hmm. i was like literally this is the first week i'm wearing these and they go to like someone damages them already i'm like you've got to be kidding me um, you know, cause it happens, it's wear and tear, I, totally acceptable. But the fact that that happened like the week I got them, I was just <laughs> like, ah, so that's probably the worst event of the week. And granted, I understand it's not that bad. So thank goodness for that. I'm grateful for that. But that is my uh, least favorite event of the week. But still cue sad trombone. Yeah, there you go. I, I might even edit that in for post-production stuff. Uh, and it's funny though, cause I guarantee you once again, there's certain females that probably had like a good bra or pantyhose or stock garters that they like that ripped and they're just like, ah, so they feel my pain. I don't really know if I like relating to that that much, <laughs> but you know, we'll roll with it. Uh, it's stripper problems, stripper problems. Yeah. Hashtag. Yeah, exactly. Hey, I think I have had Axel on the show complain about someone ripping his underwear and then like, it's just a thing. Yep. You lose underwear. What can I tell you? My best event, actually, is the fact something a little outside of the club, but I was asked a couple of months ago, actually, shoot, yeah, a significant amount of time ago to pick up a beginner silks class, aerial silks class. I've really taken enjoyment in this passion of mine. I've been hitting it fairly hard four to five times a week, and it's caused me to, to grow and my skills to develop quite quickly. I was asked to become a teacher and honestly I think it was more of the fact that I was a quote unquote attractive guy mm -hmm. and there's probably about 3% of the aerial community is actual guys. Right. So smart on the owner for, you know, trying to market that. And so I finally took him up on it and decided, you know what, it's going to help me because I'm going to really refine what I'm doing, pay attention to what I'm doing, and I enjoy teaching and watching people do something that makes them happy. So I started and it's just turned out to be one of the best decisions I've made. I I just like seeing people come in for the first time. They're super skeptical and they end up learning two or three new shapes and things they can do in the air and it makes them super excited or they're really nervous about going upside down, but they do it and they trust themselves to kind of let go. And it's just really, really rewarding. And just watching 
my enthusiasm creep into them, mm-hmm. uh, which I didn't know until people told me. They're like, you're just so enthusiastic. Like, it's hard not to want to do these things. Yeah. And so it's really, really rewarded me to the point where even today, my the owner ended up making me uh, a custom-made instructor shirt because of the fact that every other instructor is female so the shirts are cut different the tank tops are cut different she couldn't give me one of those so she ended up going out and making two custom instructor shirts for me and gave those to me today so and she took my class so it was really really rewarding just watching it as a whole Mm -hmm. maybe not one specific class but in general and even seeing ladies that have been coming to the class for months just kind of taking me having me explain something a little differently or showing it differently and then being like, it clicked it. I get what I'm doing now. This is awesome. Mm-hmm. So it's super great, super great. Really been a rewarding experience for me uh, that I was super skeptical about because I was like, man, I don't really know if I want to be teaching people this, but I guess I have a, a solid grasp of the fundamentals and it's transferred over really well. And sometimes it's not about how much you know, but how how well you can put that in someone else's mind. Yeah. You know, and, and knowing you, I think you're just... I'm not surprised at all hearing this because you, like, at your core, you want to make other people's lives better. I mean, when you served in the military, you wanted to make other people's lives better. When you are on stage, you want to make these women's lives better. And as an instructor, you want to make their lives better. So I'm I'm not surprised at all that you're very good at it. Thank you. I, I, geez, man, flattery from you is, uh, I hold you in high esteem, so I really appreciate that. The... Funny thing, so also, so I initially thought that she wanted me to be an instructor. I mean, granted, she's seen my skill and I've, I've gone to open gyms and practice there, but uh, to encourage women to come out, you know, because, mm-hmm. you know, once again, I use the term loosely, but who doesn't want to take instruction from a hot guy, right? And, but what it turns out is I've actually encouraged other males to come into it because I've had two guys, two dancers, which I've let to take a class, but two dancers say that they want to come out and take my class mm-hmm. to just try it. They're just afraid that it's going to kick their butts. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a firefighter, that a local Dallas firefighter that is now taking the class. And it helps because I kind of relate a little more to what he's doing and why he's doing the things he's doing because of the difference in or similarities in physique mm-hmm. just like certain females instructors don't know when to tell me like hey be careful for your boy bits in this move you know what i mean it's right, kind of one of those right. things where i have to do it and then i'm like what? oh <laughs> nope that move can we do this a different way and they're like what oh okay same thing and to the uh point for my red charity event the owner came out and she brought a group of other instructors and friends and people from out of town to the charity event to support it but she also brought her husband and it was funny because she asked me she's like would it be weird if i go Mm -hmm. i'm like no not at all come on out and she's like okay two-part question would it be weird if my husband goes i'm like as a matter of fact i have plenty of couples that come out and see me and it's a great time and it's great Mm -hmm. so he came out and i didn't get confirmation from him but he came out and they managed to see my performance and i did my aerials at the club that night the next wednesday he showed up in my class and was like, yeah, I just kind of figured I'd give it a shot and see what this is all about. So, yeah. Um, And he's been taking pole for three years now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, granted, it's a different apparatus. You move around the pole versus the silks moving around you and stuff like that. But the fact that, like, I feel like seeing part of my performance may have been that tipping scale to motivate him to come out was great. Like, so it's awesome. It, It really, wow. Like, I inspired someone to try this Mm -hmm. and it's really rewarding which i actually did happen in new year's the first time i performed at the club where you saw saw that yes uh actually two other females that were at that club that night to see that performance began an aerial journey because of that wow uh so one did take up silks and one took up a aerial hammock but it's just great like it's so awesome to share something that you found passionate with other people and they realize it's passion yeah like they wow i really enjoy this so it was great. Yeah, long. Wow, that was a little long-winded on both of our behalf, but that was my best part of the week. No, but that's great because I think when, when you exude that, then you know that's going to affect other people. And, and they, they might not only be inspired by it, but feel like it's realistic enough that yeah. they can do it. You know, It's not completely out of their grasp. And you combine that it's doable with, and look how much he's enjoying it. Mm-hmm. I want to have that joy. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. Kind of similar, almost, almost as if a random person would want to go up on stage at our strip club and perform. Almost. Almost. Like snippets. 
you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, sweet. All right, so because you asked me what my best and worst was, and I said, well, tell you what, why don't we just get to this part of the show and I'll surprise you. Um, I have a surprise for you because you are doing all of this for me. So I'm going to go to this other part of the room now and get something out of a bag. So I'm walking way over here so that my voice sounds very different so that I can make a big show of this for entertainment value. And now I put something behind my back and now I'm coming back to the chair. And now he's going to close his eyes and put his hands out. And I'm going to put something... Which I'm so awkwardly doing now. ...in his hands that is in no way gross. And he is now going to open his eyes. Oh, wow. That's amazing. That is incredible. This is a replica of the Metallica cutoff shirt that your friend... Joe Medigliano, Joe yeah. wore in Magic Mike 2 in his most famous scene in the convenience the, store. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. You are something else, uh, which we'll get to later on, but Secret Ace Men is quite the movie buff, and so he remembers all kinds of great details and stuff. That is fantastic. I might have to... Uh, Post a picture of this if in, in like a semi-accurate yeah. or similar convenience store and then maybe tweet it out to, to Joe and see what he says. I, um, I was half tempted to bring you a big bag of Cheetos just to make you do yeah. it right now. But yes, I would love to see a picture uh, of you. Shoot, I, or I guess I could text it to him. I, I try not to text him too much though because I'm sure his phone gets blown up all the time. That is fantastic though. Oh man, that's so cool. I'm going to... You know what? Now we might have to do like a slight like... Uh, one minute video of uh for social media both you and i doing various routes yeah that's what i'll do we'll do the same thing all right and then just go back and forth like i'll edit it so it's back and forth um i don't know my brain my uh, creative juices are flowing now so we'll uh i'll figure out one way to make this happen that's pretty awesome though the uh man you're too generous i really appreciate that well i i've just i really wanted to to Come up with some way to thank you for what you're about to do for me, and yeah. so thank you very much. Yeah, thank me now before a month or two into it, and you're like, why am I eating this? Like, can I just have some brownies? <laughs> no. Awesome. Well, that is definitely going to be a show. I appreciate you coming on the show, Secretist Man, and taking the time to actually be comfortable broadcasting this to the world. I hope we inspire all kinds of people, maybe not necessarily to go to your local strip club and perform, but do something. Do you something. Do something that's, yeah. that's, that's a grand breaking out thing, whatever that thing might be for you, because um, even just talking this all through, and it's very freeing, and I, I'm, I feel like I'm going to walk out of here that much taller saying I, I've committed and I'm, yeah. I'm doing a big thing, and that feels great to, to do that. Yeah, you're you're not a fidgeter, and I've seen you almost fidget this entire time because of excitement, <laughs> and uh, the grin has not left your face, which is awesome. It's intoxicating. It it's it, it, it it's addictive as well. Not addictive. What's the word I'm looking for? Like contagious. Mental, contagious. Thank you. That was the word I was looking for. Um, yeah, it's it's great. How can I not be motivated to do something like this when this is the kind of response I get? And I think that's where people really appreciate my teaching style because I the it's a mutual exchange the mm -hmm. more someone wants to soak up the information I'm giving the more rewarding it is for me and the more I want to give them and I just going back to the class thing so far nine out of ten times my class has always ran over time mm -hmm. because I'm just want to keep teaching and then I look I'm like oh okay all right everyone finish up what you're doing time to cool down right um so thank you again for for doing this and for being on the show Across the board, but for making me a part of this special and amazing event for two people I really care about, I think are great friends, and for adding that so much value to my podcast, my humble podcast, to all my great listeners out there. Thank you once again for those of you that shared and every, share this podcast and everything else. I really appreciate it. Thank you because you all are awesome as well. Secretist man, where can people reach you at? You can find me on Instagram at Secret Alias Man. Um, and I respond to everything. Um, so I'm there. Sweet. Excellent. Do you want to plug your podcast? Um, I have a movie review podcast that's also a comedy show called The Fantastic Justice Squad Super Wonder Brother Friends. 
But um, if you go to iTunes or any of the Google Play and search for Fantastic Justice, we're the only name in town. Um, you'll see two heroes on a roof, and that's us. But um, it's a really great time. It's my brother and I. Uh, we both just love movies, and good or bad, we find the fun in all of them. Yeah, it's, I listen to the podcast. I'm an avid listener. It's absolutely phenomenal. They do a great job. Uh, there's some post-production stuff in there as well, so it gets an added touch. And I believe... If I'm correct, you had discussed on being more a uh, more consistent schedule now because I know for a little while you guys were kind of random. We were a little bit random because of his uh, school teaching uh, career, but um, he's he's finished up his latest doctorate, and so oh wow okay. So I think we're going to get back on schedule, and and we're going to hit some of the the movies that because we missed them in theaters, now they're out on DVD. Yep. So that was Plan B, which we totally planned and is now Plan A because we meant it the whole time. But we'll, we'll talk about them when they're DVDs. So they're out now and we can, uh, we can get back on schedule. Excellent. Yeah, it's, like I said, it's a great show. Whether they hated the movie, loved it, or in between, they do a really good job of covering everything. They even have a kid's corner where they talk about how the movie is for children if you are family, you know, if you are family orientated and stuff like that. So definitely check it out. Um, yeah, uh, for me, CaesarTheCrowdPleaser.com is pretty much all things Caesar. You can catch me on social media. Facebook is Caesar Coyazo, C O L L A Z O. Instagram and Twitter is Caesar LaBear7. And realize that you can also catch this the theme song for this podcast on Bandcamp. Just look up Caesar the Crowd Pleaser, but you can also go to CaesarTheCrowdPleaser.com and there'll be a link there to download this and that way even if it's stuck in your head you can still play it on your smartphone and stuff like that once again thank you to all my listeners out there you are the reason why i'm still doing this show not gonna lie it's it's tough keeping a schedule and finding people to bring on the show and topics and things like that but the fact that people are getting stuff out of it and they're sharing it and they're enjoying it every time i hear something about the show that people love it it really makes a difference. So thank you, everyone, for doing that. That being said, don't forget to also rate uh, Secret Aid, This Is Man's podcast on iTunes. That helps them get out there. Also, leave a review. Like, Let them know if there's something that you really liked or really didn't like so they can improve their show. All right. Uh, once again, thanks again, Secret Aid, This Man. Really appreciate everything, thank brother. Thank you. And, and everyone, send in words of encouragement to Caesar's, <laughs> to Caesar's social media so I can read them in... Uh, and stay on this. I, 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 I need it. Yes. Actually, that's a good idea. I'm actually going to post that uh, when I post this podcast. I will say, hey, after listening to the podcast, come back to this thread and let me know what you think. And that way you can see it. Please. Um, sweet. Awesome. All right, everyone. Thank you again. Until next time. Keep bringing the rain. I am focused, I'm in my zone You can binge watch like Game of Thrones Reserve your judgments, don't throw no stones Who's and I scream as loud as you go That play mode on tablets and phones Caesar's crowd pleasers is now on Caesar The crowd pleaser If you need to pick me up, ladies We gon' change your demeanor Caesar The crowd pleaser we gon' do a little dance, we gon' make the naysayers believe us.